I'm Ellis Martin, and this is Money Talk Radio. Join me for a conversation with John Pasolacqua, Chief Executive Officer of First Phosphate Corporation. Trading on the CSE as PHOS, and in the U.S. on the OTC as FRSPF. First Phosphate is a vertically integrated phosphate development company based in the saguenay lac Jean region of Quebec, dedicated to producing battery-grade phosphate for the North American Lithium Iron Phosphate, or LFP, battery industry. The company controls over 1,500 square kilometers of rare igneous phosphate deposits, including its flagship, Beijing the Marsh Project, located about 70 kilometers from Port Saguenay, one of Canada's deepest seaports. John Pasolacqua brings decades of experience in corporate finance, public company development, and international business strategy, with a focus on aligning critical minerals projects to emerging clean energy markets. Let's hear how he and his team plan to build a fully integrated supply chain for LFP battery materials right here in North America. John, welcome to the program. It's great to have you. Yeah, thank you all. It's great to be here. Lithium iron phosphate. We just had some news out of China cutting off the supply essentially to us. We've got a tariff war right now and eyes are on First Phosphate Corp. Vertically integrated right there in Quebec. Tell us about the company. So the company had foreseen this coming about three years ago. We started out with the intention to basically onshore the LFP battery industry in North America three years ago and to work towards a fully integrated situation where we would go from phosphate mine all the way to the production of LFP cam and to obviously LFP cathode active materials and LFP battery cells with partners. So the company basically it starts with a future mine that will be in, in an area called Beijing La Marche that's in saguenay lac saint jean Quebec, which is two hours north of Quebec City. It's Quebec's fifth largest population basin. It's where the aluminum is made right now from Rio Tinto. Also has a big forestry industry. So there's a great population up there that's hardworking and very industrial and lots of industrial equipment suppliers. So the mine site will be at 70 kilometers, 70 driving distance from the port of Saguenay, which is a deep sea port of Saguenay. You might have heard of Port of Saguenay. They're now talking about getting all the minerals from the Ring of Fire in Ontario across northern Ontario and Quebec to Port of Saguenay to be able to make it over to Europe. So the second portion of that is basically a phosphoric acid plant where we would take the phosphate concentrate from the mine and at the Port of Saguenay, part of it would go off to our offtake partners in Europe and then the other half would remain for us to make purified phosphoric acid. And the third step then is to take that purified phosphoric acid and, and iron, some of which comes from our site, believe it or not, as a secondary recovery, to make lithium iron phosphate cathode active material, which then would go down to partners to making LFP battery cells in North America, which right now we don't make any LFP battery cells in North America. They all come from China. So as you said earlier, Ellis, you know, that the supply chain is being threatened to be cut off. So first phosphate is the furthest along in terms of this vertical integration model from phosphate mine all the way to the production of LFP cathode active material and LFP battery cells for North America to decouple us from that looming moment when there'll be a line in the sand drawn where we can't get these cells from China anymore. And you had this vision three years ago. Many of the companies that we're covering right now are early stage exploration and hey, that's great. We need that coming down the road five, 10 years out, but you're getting ready to refine process as soon as when? We have our third transformation, which is making the LFP cam. We have a building that's been allocated to that in saguenay lac saint jean Quebec. That is scheduled probably for late 2026, early 2027 at this point. We're just waiting to firm up some of our offtakes. We're also waiting to see what happens with all these border and tariff wars. We are able to start processing minerals from others as of late 2026, early 2027. And then by 2029, we'll be able to backwards integrate with our own mining stock. And that's really when you need to be backwards integrated because the demand will be so high that the critical minerals will no longer be available to do it. So you'll be taking feedstock from Quebec and possibly Ontario as well? Now, if we were to use feedstock, it would be feedstock that would come from our partners that would come from Tennessee and it would come from the U.S. As I understand it, the batteries that you're developing will have a longer battery life than, let's say, the one that's sitting in my Tesla right now, which the first charge loss is pretty apparent. These will be LFP battery cells. So we've already made LFP battery cells from full North American critical minerals. It was a small commercial batch production, produced about 150 of these, and we cycled them 2,000 times and they kept their charge. So these will be LFP battery cells that will be like all other LFP battery cells out there. There's been a lot of progress in recent years as to these LFP battery cells and battery cells in general. They're better at holding their charge. So I don't know which cells you're referring to, but they're generally getting quite good, the technology. And the ones that we made from these very pure North American critical minerals did 
have really good performance, total commercial grade performance. Let's review what makes your project more economic compared to other early stage projects in North America. Obviously, we're into phosphate. We're not into lithium, so it's hard to compare with lithium. So generally, phosphate has a lower value than lithium is about $10,000 a ton. Igneous phosphate is around $500 per ton. So what's true of lithium is even more true with phosphate, meaning that you have to be really near infrastructure. You know, far from infrastructure, they've had a hard time. Our igneous phosphate deposit is at 70 kilometers, 70 driving distance from the deep sea port of Saguenay. And that's extremely advantageous because you're moving material and you want to keep those distances short. And then the other thing that's important is our secondary transformation will occur at Port Saguenay, which is only 70 kilometers from the mine site. So the transportation is short. And then also our off-takers are over in Europe for the product that we'll be shipping from Port of Saguenay that goes by sea vessel. What we have is really superior logistics. And the fact that we're sitting in the saguenay lac saint jean Valley of Quebec is also very important, as I mentioned earlier, because there's a lot of workforce. There's a lot of industrial workforce there. So that's really the secret, I think, is having these deposits close to infrastructure where the secondary processing can occur not so far away, and that really improves the economics. You have a great partner in the government of Quebec that many other mining companies don't have, at least in North America. Expand on that if you don't mind. The government of Quebec has made a lot of bets in the battery sector. A lot of them have not gone so well in terms of their Bacon Core projects. However, the government of Quebec remains a government that's truly committed towards greenification, electrification, and that they're very close to the industry on that level. So yes, we have letters of interest from the Quebec government. They're very much interested in the project, and that is a real advantage. You've had very positive response in the market since the news from China came out. An amazing amount of response, and I think potentially you are still undervalued. Every CEO is going to say their company is undervalued. Just on the mindset alone, our NPV net present value is $2.1 billion, and we trade at just over $100 million market cap. So yes, there is a long way to go to capture that. And that's just one aspect of our project that doesn't take into account the phosphoric acid plant or the LFP CAM production. So yeah, I would think that there's good value to be had as we continue to build out the project. And the market response has been terrific in the last couple of weeks. Why? Because finally, that seems like that line in the sand is being drawn between North America and China with the relationship between the two administrations going in a direction of a real standoff. Of course, China coming back and saying, hey, we're going to cut off three things, right? Rare earths, semiconductors, and then this thing called LFP technology. Everybody hears the first one and the second one, not so many people hear the third one, LFP technology. It might be even be more important because it affects all of our energy grids, but the market is starting to understand that one as well. And when they look for rare earth companies to invest in, there's a lot of them. When they look for semiconductor stocks to invest in, there's also a lot of them. But LFP and phosphate for LFP, there aren't too many of them. So a lot of that comes to us. We really benefit from that in terms of market interest. The other thing I will say as well, Ellis, people are starting to realize that there's a lot of lithium companies out there. There isn't really any other igneous phosphate company out there that we know of 100% dedicated to LFP battery as we are. So we're really a go-to name and a lot of this lithium is going to end up landlocked unless there's some type of an agreement or some type of an ability to get to the phosphate. Phosphate is going to be a major choke point in LFP batteries, which are now, some say, 60 to 70 percent of global output of all batteries and all of which come from China. I certainly haven't heard of any other companies doing what you're doing. Now, what are your biggest execution risks and how are you managing funding without dilution? An important question. Yeah, I guess the biggest risks have always been capital, right? Capital and investor awareness because we're known out there, humbly saying, speaking as a management team that executes, we've over-executed. We're really proud of that. The only risks had always been access to capital and like you said, diluting at lower levels. Thankfully, the company is well funded now. We have almost $20 million in the bank. It gets us almost through our entire feasibility study and perhaps some of the permitting. We don't have to come back to market for at least another 12 months if we don't want to, unless it's opportunistic. Those risks are dwindling as the project advances and as the market sees that we are real and we're able to hit our milestones. And now we have a market cap that supports that. Can you talk about some of the offtake partners you've got lined up? Yeah. So at the mine level, we have about 25% of our mine stock sold. The other 60% stays for us to go into second transformation. And then at the second transformation, we have about 33% of our production off taken. And then the rest will be for us for LFP cathode active material production. And that's with the partners in Europe. There's definitive bankable off take agreements. And then on the LFP CAM side, we have a number of MOUs in place with companies that are looking to produce these batteries and need the cathode active materials from North America. And we're firming those up as we speak. So we're pretty much clear on all three levels of our production in terms of off takes. And we're right there for as this industry 
develops. Have you developed relationships with AI centers around the globe, or at least in North America and Europe, for supplying energy for those operations that are now building out? Yeah, really good question, Ellis. So all those AI data centers, what people need to realize is they all function on very fragile type of logistics and hardware. And what goes through that, the lifeblood of all of that is electricity, right? It's really a big play on the electron. So all the electricity that goes in and flows through these data centers and back out needs to be fully regulated. They can't have any data glitches. They can't have any bumps in current. And all of that, by the way, is regulated on LFP battery. So they need to store energy. So all that is stored on LFP battery. So what we are doing is extremely pertinent to data centers. And in fact, one of the biggest blind spots of all these data centers that some are starting to realize, but they will definitely realize as they start mounting these things, is really the access to LFP battery and LFP battery cells and how all of that comes from China and how they will all be dependent on China for that. It's no wonder that when China comes out and says, hey, we're going to restrict three things that on that list is LFP battery. Even though we haven't picked the fight with them on LFP battery, they said it right away. LFP batteries, we're not sending that stuff over because they know how important and cumbersome that can be to the energy grid and to the AI infrastructure. It's right up there with computer chips. LFP technology and computer chips are almost the same thing because they rely on each other. What kind of discussions are you having with the Canadian government or the American government for that matter, if any? Obviously, a lot of that is non-public information. All companies of our stature are having multiple discussions on multiple levels with all of these governments. There's a real impetus out there to get things done, so it's great. Can you potentially look to them? And I understand that you can't really say much about it from what I just heard. Can you potentially look to them for funding in the future? You can. I prefer private funding. We don't have a penny of government money in our company yet, and it's almost a good thing. It allows you to go much faster. It allows you to be much more market-driven. We wouldn't say no to government money. But as government money comes with strings, it takes time to obtain it, and then it takes time to even get it. It's not as romantic as everybody thinks, but we're certainly open to it. I would just say that everybody has been very concentrated on the lithium trades, thinking that a battery is just lithium, but a battery is more than just lithium. And we're coming to the point now where we actually have to build batteries, not just think about them. So if we're thinking about LFP batteries, there's 300 lithium companies out there. There's certainly iron powder in North America. We have access to it through one of our partners, the largest atomizer of steel powder out there, GK and Hogan us, but where do you get the phosphate? right? Phosphate is a real big choke point on LFP battery, which is now 60 to 70% of battery production out there. It's a choke point for LFP technology. And we're the company here to solve that need. We're probably the only company in North America that's fully vertically integrated around igneous phosphate for LFP battery. Your drilling program, 30,000 meters, when does that start? That has started this week. And that is out there to really just define the entire resource. And once that's done, then obviously we can move into our feasibility study and really accelerate that. What's the potential mine life of this project? So right now, that's only having gone down 300 meters. So it's 2.5 kilometers long by 300 meters wide, and we've only gone down 300 meters. We know these formations can go down about 1 to 1.5 kilometers. But just what we have and what we know at the moment, it's about 23 years. And to give you just some facts on that, it would be 23 years of supplying LFP batteries for half the fleet of electric vehicles, as an example, produced in North America per annum. So about 6 million vehicles per annum. And that's what these 350 gigawatt hours of LFP battery that we could produce the phosphate for could supply in terms of North American energy independence. And of course, we haven't touched on grid storage. That's going to be a catchphrase if it's not already. Ellis, so when I said we could supply half of the vehicles being produced in North America, that's really 7% of LFP. The other 50-60% of LFP is grid energy storage and data centers and uh, telecom and small uh, utility vehicles such as scooters, uh, wheelchairs, drones. We are not going to have enough phosphate. We are not going to have enough LFP regardless of the way you skin this. And whatever we have here is going to get gobbled up very quickly. Thank you so much for joining me today on the program. I hope you keep in touch. Let's talk again in the very near future. Thank you to all your listeners. Appreciate the time. You've been listening to my conversation with John Pasalacqua. CEO of First Phosphate Corp. Trading on the CSE as PHOS and in the U.S. on the OTC as FRSPF. First Phosphate is developing a vertically integrated source of battery-grade phosphate in Quebec, Canada. To learn more, visit firstphosphate.com. For the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio, I'm Ellis Martin.